Good morning. Welcome to worship this Sunday morning, this sunny, warm, delightful snow. What am I saying? We're in Minnesota, rainy, cold, icky morning. But did you happen to notice the tulips have popped their little heads out? So right on whatever direction this is, as you walk in, the tulips have come out, and so they are loving the rain. It's good to see you here this Sunday morning. Welcome to worship. We have a birthday girl in our midst. Pat turned 90 years old, and I think we should sing to her. So, Dan. <laughs> It's so wonderful to have you here, and I know you've been doing a lot the last couple of days to celebrate your 90th, and if you also didn't catch, there is a banner right outside the sanctuary that has two different pictures of Pat, one slightly younger, one slightly older, and it's a, it's a lovely tribute, so I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad everyone is here this day. I do have a couple of announcements. We are still collecting items and donations for the birthday bag kits for Veep. We're looking for cake mix, frosting, candles, plates, and napkins. And there is a Veep box that you can drop them off or you can give donations of money and then we will go purchase those. We'll gather all the items and then after worship May 22nd, which is about two weeks from today, uh, we'll assemble the kits and then deliver them to Veep. And then when families come through the food shelf, if they have a young person who's having a birthday, they are able to pick up a birthday bag kit and celebrate a little bit something special for them. You should have all also received a survey about the conversation that's beginning here at St. Mark's about the future of our beloved church. May 16th is the deadline to return those. So please, if you haven't returned them or you need an extra copy of that survey, please ask and we will get them to you. Uh, you can give them to Jeff or to Dave. They will be uh, recording all the responses and then it's likely we will have a conversation with one of our UCC ministers in June. So thank you in advance, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. That's all my announcements for this morning, so I invite you to take a breath in and a breath out, to calm your hearts and minds, to let go of whatever may have happened for you already this day as we prepare for worship. Let us be in a moment of silence. And let us join together in the call to worship. It is God who draws us here, a yearning to praise, that which is bigger than us, a desire to give thanks. For the bountiful gifts of life, it is God who draws us here, for comfort in a bruising world, to challenge our half-hearted efforts. It is God who draws us here, to sing and pray, to experience the risen Christ. Let us together join our voices in the opening hymn, He Lives. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Holy God, we give thanks for the gift of life and breath, the gift of gathering this day. Bless us as we hear your word. Strengthen and nurture us, and then send us out to be a people of hope, a people of love. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us confess our sins before God and one another in the prayer of confession. Merciful and loving God, your love for us is unconditional, yet our love for you, for others, and for ourselves is often marred. We allow prejudice and pride to blind us. Our brokenness remains unhealed. We cling to old stories and hurts which impede the work of reconciliation. Forgive us, we pray, for failing to trust you, for playing it safe instead of following the daring call of your spirit, for withholding forgiveness and grace from ourselves and others. Let your love renew us yet again. Let the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead rekindle creative life within us and restore right relations among us. Amen. I invite you to a moment of silent confession. Amen. Hear these words of assurance that our God is a faithful and just God and does indeed forgive us of all sin. Believe the gospel that in Christ we are forgiven once again and we are invited to live life anew, forgiven and freed. This is good news indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen. I think we will just continue right on to the scripture reading. You're so good, Lauren. You just went right by there. So we, this day, are reading from the book of Acts once again, chapter 16, verses 16 through 40. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune-telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were unfastened. 
When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors open wide, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that all the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. And then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. This ends today's reading. So I remember when I was in fourth grade, my friends came for a sleepover. It was likely for my birthday. And I no longer remember all of the details, but what I do remember is this. We stayed up until 4 a.m., which was so cool when you are a fourth grader. Not so cool anymore, but at that age, it was amazing. I also remember that we put 45s on the stereo. You all know what I'm talking about. Keon, 45s, right? <laughs> you want to know what song we sang on that old 45 stereo, on the 45 on the stereo? We sang Funky Town by Lips Inc. All five of us singing and dancing in my parents' basement, singing our hearts out, and I think their vent was right nearby, so I'm sure they heard part of it. And even though it's only been a few years since that occurred, whenever that song comes back on the radio, I still know those words. I have often talked about the power of music and song. Music touches our hearts and our souls in a way that nothing else can. Even when we can't remember what we had for breakfast yesterday, and I'm talking about myself, I can remember songs and memories associated with it, soundtracks of all of our lives. Last week, the news came out about the death of Naomi Judd. She died by suicide at only 76 years of age. And on the surface appeared that she had everything, right? And yet for many years she struggled and lived with mental illness. She was part of a duo with her daughter, Winona, called the Judds. Anybody listen to the Judds? I'm, I'm not looking at you, Dan, because you're not a country fan. But together, the Judds won five Grammys and had 14 number one singles. And they reunited for a public performance for the first time in 20 years, just a couple weeks ago, at the CMT Awards. It was the last time we would hear her voice. And the song that they sang, one of their number ones, is Love Can Build a Bridge. I gladly walk across the desert with no shoes upon my feet to share with you the last bite of bread I had to eat. I would swim out to save you in your sea of broken dreams. When all your hopes are sinking, let me show you what love means. Love can build a bridge between your heart and mine. Love can build a bridge. Don't you think it's time? It might even be that someone who really doesn't like country music might, looking at no one in particular, like the Judds. Their harmonies, their music, their powerful words and stories that they tell through song, the joys and the hardships of life. I'd be willing to bet that you have favorite songs that speak to your heart or that remind you of a particular time in life. Maybe it was the beginning of a new relationship and you were in love, right? 
Or maybe it was the end of the relationship and you were like, good riddance. There is an excellent song out there now by a woman named Gail, some G-A-Y-L-E, and she sings the best goodbye song. I, I won't sing it for you, but it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> maybe it was at the birth of a child or the death of a loved one. When John and I bought our first home in Columbia Heights and we were moving all our stuff in, Billy Ray Cyrus's achy breaky heart was number one on the radio. And oh my gosh, did we hear that song a lot. Think for a moment of a song that reminds you of a time in your life. You all have them. Songs have played a significant role in the lives of our nation and our world. Think of the songs during the Civil Rights Movement or the songs of the Underground Railroad, the songs during World War II or the Vietnam War. When Elvis began a little thing called rock and roll, our nation changed in dramatic ways. New Orleans brought this nation jazz and the blues. California brought surfer music to the mix. The hills in Appalachia were filled with folk music, songs sung by ordinary people of everyday life. And country and Western continue to tell the tales of cheating, lying, gambling, a pickup truck, and the family dog. There's an eight-part CNN series called Soundtracks that explores music tied to moments in history, from the March on Washington to the riots at Stonewall to the moon landing to Hurricane Katrina. I've only watched the episode about Hurricane Katrina, and many feared that the music born in this nation would be lost when that hurricane devastated the area. But a sign that new life was possible was that when after all had happened, after all the death and devastation and loss, music began to be heard on the street corners once again. Music and songs express hope and joy and sorrow. They tell of birth and death and new life. They tell of love and loss, triumph and defeat. They are code for those who cannot speak dangerous truths. They speak to the hope for a better world. They tell the stories of our times and our lives. And of course, songs have played a significant role in the life of religious communities too. The book of Psalms was Israel's first hymn book. We read of Miriam and Moses singing when they successfully bled so many through the Red Sea from bondage in Egypt to freedom in the wilderness. David saying to the Lord, with very little clothing, we notice. And we read of Mary singing praises to God when she hears that she is to bear a child. And this morning we hear Paul and Silas singing in the prison while shackled and bruised and beaten. Just a few chapters ago, Paul saw the light. And rather than persecuting those who believed in Christ called followers of the way, he became chief proclaimer of Christ, especially to the Gentiles. Many years have since passed, and Paul heeds a call to go to the region of Macedonia, where they end up in the city of Philippi, and he meets Lydia there, a wealthy woman who is a seller of purple cloth. And as she listens to Paul, she too comes to believe, and they stay with her as her guests. But one day, the scriptures tell us, Paul and Silas are going to the place of prayer and they encounter a girl who is possessed by a spirit of divination. In other words, she could tell the future and her owners are making quite a bit of money off of her fortune telling. When this girl sees Paul and Silas, she follows them around, saying, these men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. Well, apparently she does this for several days, and Paul just gets a little more than annoyed. It's like going on a 12-hour card ride and at the 30-minute mark and every 30 minutes following. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? So Paul, being perfectly imperfect as he is, turns around and says, In the name of Jesus Christ, get out of her. And the spirit leaves, and she is free. Is the girl happy that she is freed? We don't really know. 
We know that the owners aren't happy because they have lost their source of revenue. She was valuable to them not because she was a child of God, but rather because she was a source of income. Sadly, as is in the case many times in the scriptures, we don't know what happened to her. But I imagine it did not end well, just as it doesn't end well for many still yet today who lose their usefulness to those who hold all the power. They are not valued for who they are. They are valued for what they bring to others. So they bring Paul and Silas before a judge, and they're beaten and thrown into the most secure place in the prison, and their feet are shackled, and it seems a bit harsh. Yet their response to being stripped and beaten and put in chains isn't anger or wrath. They don't spit out insults or cast blame. Instead, we read that they pray and they sing hymns to God. Do you ever wonder what they might have been singing? And in their singing, they witness to all those who could hear. And them being in the middle of the prison allowed everyone around to hear. And we know that they were listening. And then there's this sort of miracle, this earthquake that occurs that opens up the prison doors and unfastens all the chains, and everyone could have just walked right out. But Paul and Silas, in concern for the jailer, remained right where they're at. And not only did they stay, but so too did all the others. Freedom was being offered on a platter, and they said, hmm, no thanks. The jailer, rushing to them, fell down and asked, what must I do to be saved? How can I be free? Because he, too, is caught in a system. And they simply reply, believe in the Lord Jesus. And Paul and Silas, this time, rather than sing, speak the word and the jailer comes to believe, just like Lydia comes to believe, and he and his family are baptized, and together they all rejoice. Well, it seems a bit of a stretch to believe that no one left the jail when presented with the opportunity. That really isn't the point of the story. The point is that Paul and Silas witness to God, and the jailer comes to believe. I love to think of Paul and Silas singing together in jail, witnessing to others their faith and trust, even in the midst of trial. There are so many hymns in the Christian tradition that witness to faith. Think of the hymn by John Newton, Amazing Grace, a former slave trader in the 1700s who wrote, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. There's a story about renowned rock guitarist Stevie Ray Vaughan, who was killed in a helicopter crash in the summer of 1990. And his family requested the song Amazing Grace be sung at his funeral. And Bonnie Raitt and Stevie Wonder and Jackson Brown led those gathered. And most everyone there knew the first verse, as many of us always know the first verse of the hymns, but when you get to the second and the third, it gets a little sketchy. And so everyone kind of petered out, but, the, but Bonnie Raitt and Stevie Wonder and Jackson Brown sang the rest of the song a cappella. And Dr. Barry Bailey commented on the power of watching and listening to the performance, especially the poignancy of Stevie Wonder singing I once was blind, but now I see, truly seeing with one's heart. The hymn rang true, Bailey insisted, because the song speaks of the universal blindness of our hearts and our spirits, not our eyes. Amazing grace means that we can never receive grace by the right belief or by our own actions or how much we work or by our own goodness even. It is amazing grace because it is free and undeserved and offered to all. One of my favorite hymns is I Was There to Hear Your Boarding Cry, which is a newer one written by Marty Haugen, who is actually an artist in residence at Mayflower United Church of Christ. 
It's a hymn that proclaims that God is there from the beginning of life and will be there to the end of life. And God never forsakes us. And I almost can make it through the hymn without tearing up. Or think of the hymn, It is Well, by, it is well With My Soul, written by Horatio Spafford, who sent his wife and four daughters on an ocean voyage and their ship collided with another, and the ship sank, and all four children were drowned. And he received a wire from his wife which read, Saved alone, children lost. What shall I do? And he writes this hymn, It is well with my soul, even in the midst of heartache and grief and despair. It is a witness to one's faith. There are so many hymns, and I started to think about it, and I began to list them, and then I thought, oh, we're going to be here all morning, so I had to stop. But there are so many hymns that we have come to love, hymns which express faith, hymns remind us of God's love, God's faithfulness, God's mercy. And not only hymns, contemporary songs, too, that are powerful, that speak to us, that touch us. While most of us, thankfully, will not have that experience that Paul and Silas did so long ago, we do experience being imprisoned in contemporary life in our own and different ways. There are physical and emotional and social and spiritual kinds of imprisonment, and they can be real, just like mental illness is an imprisonment. And it is very real, and it is very powerful. But ultimately, all of these do not have power over our lives because that word is reserved for God the God to whom we pray and who we sing in good times and in bad the God revealed to us not only in the resurrection but also in the cross so whether we are singing Handel or Schubert or John Newton or Horatio Spafford or Swing Low Sweet Chariot Cat Stevens Morning Has Broken or countless other hymns of the church these songs are a testimony, a witness, an expression of joy, of sorrow, of trust, of brokenness, of redemption, of grace, of God's love. In the words of another well-known song, Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear the music ringing. It finds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? Amen. We have been blessed so that we might be a blessing to others. So let us share from our abundance our gifts of time, our money, prayers, and energy. You're invited to give to the mission and ministry of this church and the wider church by donating either directly to the church, by placing an offering in the plates located in the back of the sanctuary, or using PayPal on our website. And we thank you for your generosity. We'll continue this morning with naming our joys and our concerns, those things that we carry close to us in our hearts, those things that we share with one another and the ones that we only whisper up to God. And so we'll spend a moment or two in silent prayer, and then I'll gather us together in the words of the pastoral prayer. So let us pray.
Holy and loving God, we give thanks to you for hearing all our prayers. Those that we share with one another and the ones that we whisper only to you in the quiet of our hearts. We give thanks that you know all our worries and fears, all our uncertainties. And we give thanks that we can lift them to you and you lighten our load as you carry them with and for us. Holy God, we especially pray for all of those on our prayer list. We pray for all of those who are mourning the loss of a loved one. We pray for all of those who are struggling to get through the day. We pray for all of those especially who are struggling with mental health, which is so real and so powerful and affects so many. And truly, we cannot tell just from the outside looking in. We also lift up to all of those who stories we don't know, who remain unnamed, whether in scripture or in modern time or in history, all of those deemed unimportant by others. We give thanks that you call each of us children of God, beloved and cherished. Holy God, we also continue to pray for this war that is going on in Ukraine and all the devastation and loss, all the heartache. We pray that there might be peace one day in that region and all parts of the world where there is struggle and strife and warfare, where there is hunger and fear, where there is lack of opportunity. Help us, O oh God, to be grateful for the blessings in our lives and help us to share from our abundance so that together we might work for a better world. Holy God, we also know that on the calendar it is marked as Mother's Day, and this is a day that brings lots of mixed emotions for so many. And whatever emotion it is that is present, it is okay. And we lift up to you all of those, the joy and the sadness and the sorrow, the thankfulness, the struggle, the heartache. We give thanks that you are mother and father to us and that you care for us and you call us beloved and that you offer us ways of life. Help us to continually turn to you. And help us to continually turn to those songs that speak so powerfully, that witness not only to others but to ourselves that sustain us, that nurture us, that bring us joy and laughter and silliness, but also comfort and reassurance of the promises of your love and your faith and your grace. Hear us, O oh God, as we pray all our prayers. We lift them up to you. And hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught all would have follow him. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So the last hymn is Children, Go Where I Send Thee. How, is, how many are familiar with that? It's not in a hymn, no? There's a couple. Really? Just a couple? Oh my gosh. All right. Well, when I first read the scripture reading for today, this song came to mind and it would not leave me. So we're singing it. And then Dan said, is this in the hymnal? And I'm like, nope. 
but I grew up singing this a cappella, so that's what we are going to do as well. And I can't remember, there's a lot of different varies of the uh, stories behind the hymn. It is a traditional African American spiritual, and there isn't a consensus on the meaning behind the song because there's numbers in the song. It's a little bit like the 12 days of Christmas, you know, where you have the first day of Christmas and the second, and there's very meanings. Well, there's meanings to this number song as well. I did leave out a few of the verses because it's rather long, but this is what I'm hoping. We're going to sing it. We're going to sing it kind of like at Easter time, right? This is a faster, joyful song. So let's try. We can do this. So I invite you to stand because we sing better when we stand. And I am really not a song leader, but I'm doing it anyway. So you got to support me on this one. So it's children go where I send thee. And I guess I will just sing all by myself and then you catch along. All right. Children, go where I send thee, how shall I send thee? I'm going to send thee one by one, one for the itty bitty. Baby was born, born, born in Bethlehem. Okay, yeah, awesome. All right, now let's keep going. Children, go where I send thee, how shall I send thee? I'm going to send thee two by two, two for Paul and Silas, one for the itty bitty. Baby was born, born, born in Bethlehem. See, now you know Paul and Silas. That's why this song came to mind. All right. Children, go where I send thee. How shall I send thee? I'm going to send thee three by three. Three for the Hebrew children, two for Paul and Silas, one for the itty bitty. Baby was born, born, born in Bethlehem. Okay, now we're going to sing it faster because otherwise we're going to be here a while. Let's go. <laughs> Children, go where I send thee. How shall I send thee? I'm going to send thee four by four. Four for the poor that stood at the door. Three for Hebrew. Children, two for Paul and Silas. One for the itty bitty. Baby was born, born, born in Bethlehem. Children, go where I send thee. How shall I send thee? I'm going to send thee five by five, five for the five that stayed alive, four for the four that stood at the door, three for Hebrew children, two for Paul and Silas, one for the itty bitty baby was born, born, born in Bethlehem. Okay, let's keep going. Children, go where I send thee. How shall I send thee? I'm going to send thee six by six. Six for the six that never got fixed. Five for the five that stayed alive. Four for the four that stood at the door. Three for Hebrew children. Two for Paul and Silas. One for the itty bitty baby was born, born, born in Bethlehem. Okay, couple more. <laughs> Right? There's 10, I'm telling you, and I cut out verses. But you are sounding amazing, so I think we have to do this more often. Children, go where I send thee, how shall I send thee? I'm going to send thee seven by seven, seven for the seven who never got to heaven, six for the six that never got fixed, five for the five that stayed alive, four for the four that stood at the door, three for the Hebrew children, two for Paul and Silas, one for the itty bitty baby was born, born, born in Bethlehem. Children, go where I send thee, how shall I send thee? I'm going to send thee eight by eight, eight for the eight that stood at the gate, seven for the seven who never got to heaven, six for the six that never got fixed, five for the five that stayed alive, four for the four that stood at the door, three for Hebrew children, two for Paul and Silas, one for the itty bitty baby was born, born, born in Bethlehem. Last time! Children, go where I send thee, how shall I send thee? I'm going to send thee nine by nine, nine for the nine that dress so fine, eight for the eight that stood at the gate, seven for the seven that never got to heaven, six for the six that never got fixed, five for the five that stayed alive, four for the four that stood at the door, three for the Hebrew children, 
two for Paul and Silas, one for the itty bitty baby was born, born, born in Bethlehem. I'm kidding, there's one more verse. Children, go where I send thee, how shall I send thee? I'm going to send thee ten by ten, ten for the ten commandments, nine for the nine that dress so fine, eight for the eight that stood at the gate, seven for the seven that never got to heaven, six for the six that never got fixed, five for the five that stayed alive, four for the four that stood at the door, three for the Hebrew children, two for Paul and Silas, one for the itty bitty baby who was born, born, Born in Bethlehem. Awesome. You guys did great. Go on to YouTube. You will see all kinds of artists who have covered this song. It is fantastic. Um, and you did a great job. So thank you for humoring me. <laughs> and we don't have to sing it until next year when Paul and Silas comes back up again. So hear this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with kindness and grant you peace this day and forevermore. And may all God's people say, Amen.